Yo, welcome guys to the second part of the series where I will teach you all the dungeons in Throne of Liberty and how to clear them the fastest. Today we're going to take a look at Death's Abyss and I want to share the main reason why lots of people farm that in the early game when they're freshly 50 and that is that ring right here, the Abyssal Crystal Ring. The stat that this has is the mana cost efficiency and many builds struggle with mana early on so many people will farm that ring upgrade that to 9 even to solve their mana issues and then once they drop their endgame ring they will transfer the upgrade process from that ring to the other ring. In the first room you want to slide by all the enemies on the left side of the wall. It's not needed to kill any of them to progress so try to avoid as many fights here as possible. In the first hallway you will now face an enchanted Arkham Arbiter. Those deal a heavy AoE attack that can potentially wipe your team. So every time he is about to spin, you have to use any form of hard CC to stop him. Stuff that works as things like stun, silence or knockback. Afterwards, you have to kill two healers and one wizard. Easiest approach here is CC one healer, kill the other healer, and so on to not receive unnecessary heals that slow down your damage progress. Now, once the gate opens, you will enter a combination of two long rooms. Here in the first one, it's the same as at the start. You want to sneak on the left side and try to not fight. In the second room, you will want to walk exactly in the middle. This will allow you to fight only the mini boss. You just have to dodge a couple AOE layers on the floor and dodge some fury attacks. He has no special mechanics. Once he is dead, you sneak your way back through the two long rooms and now your pathway splits in two directions. Here the best is if you send a dagger player out with stealth to pull one lever while the rest of the party goes and kills the mobs in the way and pulls the second lever. This will open the next gate. Same as always, avoid aggros from the mobs. In this last room here, you will have to kill the captain and he basically has the same mechanic as the Arbiter. Besides one extra, he is doing a scream. He will not do an AoE attack right away. He will cast a shield first. And as you continue to DPS, it will turn red. And this is your timer when you will need to hard CC him to not get wiped. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learned something new in this video, you have to subscribe. Congratulations, you've made it to the boss. To defeat Karnix, the early game is really simple. He will just do some straightforward AoE attacks that travel in a line and you just have to dodge those. But be careful, because the whole time he will also be casting fury attacks that you have to block. If you are a melee, it's a bit more difficult, because in close range he has one more additional fury attack. At some point, he will then cast an attack that attaches a skull over some members of your party. Those members will now be chased by a fog of death. You will walk at the outside of the arena to not accidentally damage your teammate. The next mechanic in his rotation is spawning a dark circle on the floor. This is a damage splitting attack, so if the whole team is standing in it, the damage gets split among everyone and you survive. If you run with a god tank, he will take that damage all by himself. Important to note that either way, right afterwards, he will do a fast fury attack so you need to block immediately afterwards. Congratulations, you have defeated Canix and you can now use 300 of your dimensional contract tokens to plunder his chest. Yeah guys, that was it with the dungeon. If you still have any questions, just let me know. As always, I will answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers guys.